I'm here still at TCT 2019 with uh, Feder from An ISO Print. You guys make some really fascinating stuff. Uh, you guys print with continuous carbon fiber. Before we jump into that, a quick shout out to my sponsor for this trip, Do It 3D. The Do It 2 and the Low Cost Do It Maestro mainboards are already some of the best mainboards you can use for your 3D printer or CNC machine. And the new Do It 3 is about to launch as well. It comes with all the features you're used to from the Do It series of boards and now has more expandability than you'll ever need. Check it out at the link below. So, Feder, can you explain to us what you're actually doing with these machines? The idea is of printing with continuous carbon fiber. So that's the material which can be much stronger and much stiffer than the, the simple plastic. In the 3D printing, when we say composites, uh, some people mostly imagine the short fiber enforced filament, but the continuous fiber is a completely different story, so it gives you an order of magnitude higher properties. So with the short fibers, you can get probably twice uh, that sounds good, but that's not even comparable to the continuous fibers. Uh, so the technology which we've developed and which is implemented in, the, in these machines, we call it a composite fiber co-extrusion. So it works simply like uh, you have an, your extrusion head where you have your plastic extruded. And the idea is that if you insert continuous reinforcing fiber inside, that will make it a composite material which many, many times stronger than simple plastic. How much fiber can you actually include in a part? Yeah, so with the concept of co-extrusion, yeah, you have the print head which has two inputs. One input is for reinforcing fiber and one input is for thermoplastic. And you have the freedom of choosing the, the thermoplastic material and the fiber volume fraction you can play with. So uh, the, um, the reinforcing fiber itself, it's, it's not a dry fiber, so it's a pre-impregnated. We've actually got a roll here. Yeah, you can see yeah. it here. So, so it's it's uh, it's a rather stiff fiber already because it's not just the the floppy pure just, fiber. Uh, it's not just the floppy pure fiber, which would not work. You, you need it to be stiff in order to pull it through all the system. You, you need it to be uh, cut it and restarted when you print, and you need a good quality impregnation. So the uh, the um, the raw material, the normal fiber toad has hundreds or thousands of microfilaments inside and it's really hard to impregnate with a viscous thermoplastic material. So what we do, we pre-impregnate the fiber toe with a special polymer, which is not a thermoplastic, in our case it's a thermoset polymer, which ensures good impregnation, so very low porosity and very good adhesion of polymer to plastic. And then we use this stiff fiber in a co-extrusion together with thermoplastic. So as it's a thermoset, it doesn't melt. So we need a thermoplastic for bonding of, uh, of these materials together. So the normal fiber volume fraction, which we normally print, which gives the best results, the best quality, is you have 50% reinforcing fiber and 50% thermoplastic, which will in the end end up with 27, 28% of, of dry fiber, of pure fiber, and about 20% uh, of, um, of a thermoset and about 50% of a thermoplastic. So we call this material a dual matrix. Yeah? So you have uh, a reinforcing fiber and you have a thermoset polymer inside the fiber and have a thermoplastic between the fibers. With the entire continuous carbon fiber approach, like the obvious question is like, this is the same thing that Mark Furch is doing, but it's, it's not quite, right? It's not quite the same. So what Mark Furch does, that's the uh, so-called a pre pregnant approach. So they, imp they pre-impregnate the, the dry fiber material with a thermoplastic, with a constant amount of plastic, uh, and then the extruder, uh, the composite extruder, is a one input, one output, so single yeah. channel, and they melt uh, the polymer, the thermoplastic inside the fiber, and they lay it up. Yeah, so the, the, the way I've described it in my Mark Forge review is essentially you've got like this flared out nozzle and it irons the, yeah. uh, the pre-impregnated yeah. fiber onto the pre-existing part. Whereas you take the fiber and embed it into the, yeah. the mate rail, yeah. into so the polymer. Extrusion, the simplest way to, to uh, explain, we have two inputs and one output. One input is for fiber, second input is for plastic and they mixed in situ. So actual composite material is born in situ when printing. 
and 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 this gives us uh, these flexibilities which I've mentioned of like printing lattices, printing variable layer thicknesses, uh, printing with uh, di different fiber volume fractions. Yeah, we have customers who were even able to get. Uh, uh, 45% of dry fiber uh, inside the process and they get more than one GPA uh, strength. This is not so easy yeah, to, to achieve, but you can, uh, yeah, if, if, you, if you really work on that, you, you can do that. So this is your smaller anti-ISO print A4 machine. It's got probably the same tool head and the same tech as the larger one, yes, but it's, it's smaller. Everything's, everything's the same except the build volume. So uh, the print head and the, all the electronics, all the, all, all the other specifications except the size are similar. So what are we looking at here? It's a, it's a dual extruder or a dual hot end system, right? Yeah, we call it a print head. So the print head uh, has two extruders. So the left one, this one is a simple FFF extruder, simple FDM extruder. So it has one input for 1.75 plastic filament. And you can use this machine as a simple FDM printer by using just this extruder. And the second one, the right one, is a CFC, composite fiber co-extrusion right. extruder. So it has two inputs, if you, you can see there. So the thin tube has the fiber, has the reinforcing fiber, and the thick tube has the plastic filament. So the fiber goes straight directly uh, through the nozzle, like that. Yeah, you can see the fiber coming. Yeah, there's a bit of a blob in the background, so you can probably not see that much. But there is supposed to be an air gap between the heater block and this uh, guide up there. Yeah, and, then, and it is there. So now the fiber is connected. And now I can uh, use the cutter. So there is 45 millimeter distance between the cutter uh, and the nozzle tip. So you, you, you have your minimum fiber print of, um, uh, of 45 millimeter. Yeah, so uh, one, one of the things that I was first looking at was like, if it's cut here and there's an air gap there, like, is it, is it going to have to push the rest of the fiber through? Because that wouldn't work. But what he explained is that it's actually being dragged out. Yeah, when you print uh, of, uh, your fiber uh, as it's continuous, of course, the fiber is actively pulled from the extruder. Yep. Uh, but when you cut it, yeah, what, uh, the remains will be pulled from the side of the part. So essentially in here we have a well, heater block and we have an L-shaped channel for the polymer to go through and yeah. then at the end right here you said there's like a, a tube that yeah, the, yeah. Uh, so yeah. the... How it works, yeah. So the fiber goes uh, straight through the air gap into a metal tube which is inside the hot block and the metal tube goes almost uh, to the inner surface of the nozzle and the plastic with an L-shaped channel and the plastic flows around and then it's mixed with the fiber almost at the output of the nozzle and then they go together. So essentially you're coating that carbon fiber with the polymer yes. and you're kind of extruding a, not a toothpaste, but a, you know, a, a, a tube, a polymer tube with the fiber on the inside and as it gets smushed down that turns into a, yeah, the a reinforcing fiber. plastic has the freedom to, to, to flow around the fiber uh, so the uh, the main role for the plastic in this process is to uh, bond fiber strands together so that uh, and the yeah and the fiber is what bring the properties the two extruders are switched during the printing so this one never extrudes just plastic because it's going yeah. it's going to backflow yeah exactly but let's talk about the softer side of things here for a bit um, because parts like these this is not something that you usually get out of any traditional slicing setup, right? Yeah. There is a, a completely arbitrary approach where you can manually, like in an AutoCAD type of software, in a, in a 2D drawing software, you can literally draw every fiber path, yeah. define extrusion, speed, whatever, for, a, for every fiber path. Yes, that's a manual uh, Labor, but, but that's I'm, the I'm only sure. Way I'm sure at some point there's going to be some translator software that's yeah, going to yeah. figure that stuff out on its own. Yeah. So, so basically, how it works, you have a drawing, and there is a tool which translates this drawing sure. by adding certain parameters into a G code, and you have a G code. It's open G code. You also can change something in there, like. Uh, if you if you used to work with a G code, you can do that. So and, yeah, the, yeah, so the goal can. with this part was what was what exactly. Yeah, with this part is actually showing uh, the the capabilities of 
of fiber steering. So what you can do and have the control of the, over the fiber direction. So if you have this part made of metal and you pull it in, uh, in this direction, it will obviously break in a weak section uh, where the, uh, the, the cross-section area is minimum. It will break here and then there will be a stress concentration coefficient applied, which will make it even more than twice weaker than if there was no hole. And with the uh, fiber steering, when you put fibers around the hole uh, like that, you remove the stress concentration. And uh, this actually, this type of, de of design is an even stress distribution part. So if you pull it like that, you will have an even stress distribution in every point. So it can break it's not, it will not necessarily break here. It can break here, here, here. Uh, you've, you've got a photo of that where it actually breaks away from the hole, yeah. which is really fascinating. And there is no stress concentration. So it means that it's, uh, yeah. it's twice stronger than... Yeah, uh, you, have, you have the entire, you have the fiber running through yeah. the entire part in one long strand. And this is, this is kind of like a, a visualization of what the stress lines typically look yeah, like in a part. Exactly. So you follow those and you get a part that has no real stress concentrations, essentially, if that makes sense to you. Basically, it means, you know, this thing can be treated like one solid block, like the, the hole wouldn't exist. Yeah, and that's uh, what we've, uh, why we've actually started doing this, because we are uh, engineers with, with a background in design and optimization of composite materials. And the way people do composites today is quite wrong. So what they do is so-called black metal or, or black aluminum when they put, a, 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 when they make a laminate, so when they have the anisotropic material and they're trying to make a quasi-isotropic thing which would w work as it would be a metal uh, and then they start milling it, machining, drilling and so on. And, and when you actually mill, when, when you drill a hole, in the, in the composite material, you have a fiber breakage. You will not only have the stress concentration, which will be there, but you will have also so-called edge effects. Then you will have delaminations due to machining uh, and, uh, and many other effects. And why? Why should you do that? All right, so the, the big question, how much do your machines cost and how much do the materials cost? Because I, I know this technology, as you can buy it, from other manufacturers, from Markforge, is, is not really cheap. So where, where do you slot it? Yeah, so we have two sizes machines available. So the smaller one is the, we call it, it's, it's called Composer A4. They're both are desktop machines, so that means that they're not so heavy. Like, like, uh, uh, the, the smaller one, the A4, uh, has the build area of an A4, exactly of an A4 paper size. And, yeah. um, so uh, sli slightly longer than the US letter size, yeah. so you guys from the US. Uh, and the price for it is 12K Euro. And then we have a bigger one, the A3, uh, which is uh, twice in area, four times the volume, uh, and it's and it's tagged at 19k euro. So in line with what you would typically pay. Yeah. So what about, what about materials then? Um, do do you need to use your materials, your nylons, your your carbons? Uh, we call it an open system for plastic. So what you need to have from us as material is a reinforcing fiber because it's especially prepared. Yes, as and so uh, you cannot use dry fiber, you, can, uh, yeah. you, you obviously need this one, but the plastic is open. So you can use any of the shelf uh, plastic filament in a 1.75 millimeter form. And, but the, the only li limitation that the, the processing uh, temperature in this case has to be below 300 C. Well, I mean, that, that only eliminates like a handful of materials. Yeah, but, but your fiber work doesn't just work with nylons, it works with almost any filament out there. Yeah, with it almost would work any material. with nylon, it would work with PC, it would work with PTG, it would even work with TPU. We've got PLA, some prints over there, I'm going to show some, those. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, some parts there. And of course, yeah, like uh, the, the fiber gives you strength and stiffness. Uh, uh, and the, the plastic gives you other properties like chemical resistance or temperature resistance or surface finish or friction properties or moisture, whatever. Yeah. So many different properties which are governed by the, by the matrix material and every application could require a special matrix material for, this, for that purpose. So, and uh, yeah, the, the system is open, so you can play with any type of filament. Uh, we, uh, we would give, and we have the preset for certain types of uh, plastics, for certain types of 
plastic suppliers are already built in in the software where you can really plug and play. But if you need something special, you can do that, but you'll need some time to tune the parameters. So that's not, uh, that's not all, always like obvious, uh, but we have special, special tools, how you do the, your, your calibration prints, you see where's enough flow, uh, where's enough temperature, enough whatever, and so you, to help you to tune the parameters for, for, for your plastic. All right, thank you very much for that. Thanks, everyone.